Welcome to Social Media for Real Estate Agents. I am your coach, Carlos Skill. If you are looking to learn more about social media marketing and how you can be more effective in using social media to grow your real estate business, then you've come to the right place. Over the next 30 minutes or so, I'm going to share with you a lot of information that you can immediately apply as soon as you're done consuming this content on today's call. The first thing that you're gonna learn about is personal branding and how you can be found online by prospective clients and really how you can become the go-to real estate agent in your city or town. I'm also gonna share with you tips for creating engaging content that converts to qualified leads. In addition, you're also gonna learn about strategies for building key relationships which are gonna help keep your referral pipeline full year round. We're also gonna talk about Facebook ads and how you can build custom audiences on Facebook. And then finally, I'm gonna share with you how to write content that converts into leads. Now, once again, my name is Carlos Skill. I am your coach. To share with you a little bit about myself and my professional background, I've been a Keller Williams Maps Group coach since 2017, I've had the pleasure and honor of personally training over a thousand Keller Williams agents. These agents have gone through the same program that I'm gonna share with you today. They've also gone through my mastermind program. And I'm very proud to say that several of the agents that have gone through this program have gone on to become top producing agents for their brokers. Now, with that said, I do bring to you 10 plus years of corporate social media experience. So I've worked for companies like Winn-Dixie, Save-A-Lot, LinkedIn, and BMC Software most recently before I went off on my own and started my consultancy and my agency, Gill Media Co. So what I bring to you is expertise from working in corporate brand marketing. How these social networks truly work, how you can get the most out of, say, Facebook, how you can really leverage Instagram to grow your business and grow your brand. And with that being said, I do have a personal brand as well. So I am an award-winning Snapchat storyteller and influencer. I'm also an international keynote speaker. Now, with that being said, I do want to invite you to connect with me. You see my social networks and my handles right there in front of you. You can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, as well as on Snapchat. So if there's anything that I don't necessarily cover in this call today, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me on social media. And at the very end, I'll also share my email with you as well. Now, before I go ahead and jump into today's presentation, I do want to let you know about my online course offering. So like I mentioned before, over the last two years, I've had the pleasure and honor of training over a thousand agents within Keller Williams as a group coach for KW. I'm now going over into the space of offering an online mastermind program. Now, before I go into today's presentation, I'm really excited to let you know about my all new online course, which launches on Wednesday, August 15th. 2018. If you are a real estate agent or broker that wants to quickly learn social media marketing and immediately apply the tactics and strategies that I'm going to personally train you on to help you sell more homes within 30 days or less, then this is the program for you. Quite frankly, there is not another program, mastermind, course, you name it. There's nothing else that exists out there that is as comprehensive as this course. It is an online-based course. So once you sign up on August 15th, you will have immediate access to all the different modules within the program. What we do is we have four weekly group calls for Q&A. So if you really think of the program as having four different modules with four different workbooks, what you will do is at your own pace every week, you will learn through each module and then we will reconvene on a weekly basis for these group calls to answer any questions that you might have. Now, the cost of this program is a one-time investment of $9.95. However, if you sign up before 
August 15th, so before the product launches, then you'll be able to lock in a one-time rate of $495. It's a $500 savings, and I highly recommend that you go ahead and take advantage of this offer today by going to socialmediacareeracademy.com, click on the products link, and then enter VIP50 to save $500. So once again, if you want to go ahead and sign up for my Social Media for Real Estate Agents Mastermind course, go to Social Media Career Academy, click on products at the very top of the screen, as you see here in front of you. And then once you go to check out, enter the coupon code VIP50 in order to go ahead and get the promotional rate. Once again, sign up before August 15th because after August 15th, once the course does launch publicly, it will be at a $995 price point. Now, with that being said, once you sign up, you do get online access to the program for an entire year. So any updates that are made, you get access to, you get access to our mastermind group, and you also get access to ongoing weekly calls with myself. Now, the objective of the course is to help agents grow their leads pipeline and sell more homes by developing an online marketing strategy comprised of the most effective strategies for social media, email marketing, and customer relationship management, also known as social selling. So once again, this is the most comprehensive course that exists, whether you are new to selling real estate and you know nothing about social media, or if you are an experienced veteran in the industry already using social media, but looking to learn more of the inside tips and tricks to help you get to that next level, then this is the course for you. Now, there's four pillars of a social media strategy, and you see those four pillars right there in front of you. They are your personal brand. Without a personal brand, you will not be successful in leveraging social media or online marketing. You can be highly successful in your community without having a personal brand online, but you still have a personal brand. And that's the personal brand that people recognize when they see you or come across you in person. The same principles in person also apply online. Now, how do you grow that personal brand? It's the second pillar. It's content marketing. Content is what people see. It's what they feel. It's what they hear when they come across your brand online. So you can be an agent that is just spamming people all day long with homes, and they're going to just perceive you to be another real estate agent out of the many, out of the hundreds and thousands in your city or town. Or you can actually take the time to engage in conversations, create content that drives value. You can use content to build relationships with other agents and really use this as a way to drive referral business. There's many ways that you can create content that's pertinent and relevant to yourself, your industry, and the city and town that you transact and do business in. So once again, first step is building your personal brand, using content to amplify that personal brand. And then the third pillar that you see there in front of you is engaging consistently. So engaging consistently means you're not just going on social media once a day, posting some content and walking away and then coming back tomorrow. But engaging consistently means you've got notifications set up on your phone. You're consistently going on the various platforms. You're having what I like to call an omni-channel presence where you're building a brand simultaneously on multiple platforms and you're going through, you're engaging in conversations, you're leaving no stone unturned because you recognize that those followers and those people sitting out there on a platform like Instagram or Twitter or even LinkedIn are potential new clients. And then the fourth pillar is measurement. And this is perhaps one of the most important Um, aspects of social media marketing that oftentimes gets overlooked by marketers, by entrepreneurs, by business owners, because how are you going to know if you're successful in anything that you do if you're not measuring the outcome? So each week of the course, we will cover one of the four pillars um, for you. So think again of the four modules, touching on personal branding, content marketing, engaging, and then measurement. Um, you study at your own pace and then we have our calls every single week 
going over each one of these pillars. Now, building a social media strategy begins with identifying who are you trying to reach? Are you in business for buyers, for sellers, for renters, or investors? Most agents that I come across fall into the category of buyers and sellers. Very few are leveraging social media to find renters and investors. Now, don't get me wrong. Renters and investors, you can easily find. You can go on a platform like LinkedIn. You can connect with doctors and lawyers, high net worth clients that are potentially looking to invest in real estate where you transact and do business. You can easily find those folks that way. Renters, same thing. Now, when I say that most agents that I deal with are looking for buyers or sellers, obviously there's more buyers and sellers out there and that's really where the money is at. So whoever you're trying to reach, the next step is what platforms are they on? So think of what your ideal client looks like. Where do they shop? Where do they eat? What do they do? How many kids do they have? Are they single? Are they married? Are they you know, under the age of 30? Are they over the age of 55? All of these demographics are going to determine where exactly you spend the majority of your, of your time on social media. Like I said before, if you are a real estate agent that's looking for high net worth individuals because you have a, a $3 million listing, it's probably going to be harder to find your next buyer through Facebook or through a couple of tweets or even on Instagram. You might have to now go over on LinkedIn to find that potential buyer for your $3 million listing. However, if you are looking for referrals, for example, in your community, if you've got a really hot lead or you have a hot listing or you, you just met a, a couple that's looking to go ahead and potentially move into the area, this is where a platform like Facebook or even Instagram works in your favor. And I'm gonna share with you guys here in just a moment how you can specifically use Instagram to do just that. The next step is how are you gonna reach this audience? So whoever your intended customer is, are you gonna reach them through promoted Facebook posts? Are you gonna reach them through organic content? And then the last bullet point there that you see in front of you on the screen is what are you going to put in front of your audience? Is it going to be videos? Is it going to be photos? Is it blog posts? Is it local news? Is it home buying tips? Once again, content is king. You have to build a personal brand. You have to engage. You have to build a community. These are all things that I'm going to show you how to do. But content is the name of the game. It's what people see. And it's not just listings, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just listings at all. Now, the keys to building a personal brand. First of all, why does personal branding matter? The reason why it matters is because people do business with who they feel comfortable doing business with. Think about your average real estate transaction. I live in Los Angeles, California, where your average home price is right around a million dollars. In order for me to buy a million dollar property, I have to feel comfortable doing business with you. I'm not just going to go ahead and, and contact my local you know, Century 21 or, or Remax office and just find a random real estate agent and say, hey, by the way, I'm pre-qualified for a million dollar property and I want to go ahead and, and buy this home. Chances are I'm going to go within my own business circles or even on social media and I'm going to ask people that I personally know who they recommend. So think of, once again, the connection to personal brand. If you're out building relationships both online and offline in your community, and even if you're not focusing yet so much online, but if you right now are someone who's highly involved in your community, in your city, in your town, you're going to chamber of commerce meetings, you're going to B&I, you're going to professional networking events, you're putting yourselves in the space where people know that you are the go-to real estate agent. Carry that momentum over to Facebook. Carry it over to online because I guarantee you that when someone in your network sees a friend, a colleague, a relative, a coworker that says, I'm looking to move and I need to sell my home or I'm looking to move and, I'm, and I need to upgrade my space, 
if you are networking actively and that person has a good relationship with you, chances are they're going to say, hey, by the way, let me introduce you to my agent. Or by the way, let me introduce you to a friend of mine that's in the business. And if you have a presence on Facebook and you're connected and you're friends, or if they like your page, most likely what they're going to do is they're going to tag your name. That way, that friend has direct access to you immediately. But it starts with understanding the reason why personal branding matters is because of what I just mentioned. People do business with who they feel comfortable doing business with. Now, effective personal branding tips. Let's go through these one by one. First is a professional headshot. I can't tell you how many LinkedIn profiles I see from agents as well as Instagram accounts and Twitter accounts which are completely unprofessional. It, you, you, what you want to have is yourself in a suit, if you're a male or even if you're a female, have professional attire, good lighting. You don't necessarily need to go out and have professional headshots taken. But think about the next time that you're at an open house, pull out your iPhone. iPhones take really good, high quality photos and just have someone take a photo of you in that listing. It's that simple. Um, professional headshot, needless to say, it is a must. Your image online is everything, especially when you're going to be reaching out to people blindly. Next is filling out your bio on Instagram, Twitter, and on Facebook too. And I want to just call out having consistency in your photo is a must. Also having consistency in your username. Um, there's a lot of times where I will see that people will have a username that doesn't align on Instagram like it does on, on Twitter. They just have a different username and it creates confusion. I made this mistake years ago when my username is Carlos Gill 83 virtually everywhere. And then Snapchat came along and I made my username be Carlos Gill. It made it very confusing for people that had followed me for years because they just associated I used the same username on every platform out there. Now, what do I mean by filling out your bio? If you look at your Instagram account right now and you look at your Twitter and you even look at your Facebook, there's precious keywords that you're probably leaving out of your bio, such as realtor, real estate agent, the city where you do business, etc. So fill out your bio completely to where it describes who you are. Also make sure that you indicate the broker that you work for. And I'll just use with you the example that the first example that comes to mind, which is Keller Williams. If you go right now on Instagram and you type in Keller Williams, there are hundreds of thousands of pieces of content tagged Keller Williams. So whether you're a Remax agent or Century 21, um, whomever, make sure that you are indicating which broker it is that you work for. The next step is filling out your bio on Instagram, Twitter, and on Facebook. And what I mean by this is ensuring that you have specific keywords contained within these profiles. So what you want to make sure that you have is keywords like realtor, real estate agent. You want to have the city where you do business. And you also want to have the broker that you work for. You know, the example that comes to mind first, uh, because I've done so much work with them, is Keller Williams. If you go on Keller Williams, um, hashtag. So the next bullet that you see there in front of you is. So the next point I want to call out is filling out your bio on Instagram, Twitter, and on Facebook. And what this means is to have specific keywords within your profile to ensure that your profile is going to be found. And the first example uh, that comes to mind because I've done so much work with them is Keller Williams. If you go on Instagram right now and you type in hashtag Keller Williams, there are hundreds of thousands of pieces of content tag hashtag Keller Williams. Same applies for Remax and Coldwell Banker and Century 21, et cetera, et cetera. And this is a good thing because you want your account to be found. Um, think of the key words in your profile as SEO or search engine optimization. A, a critical mistake that a lot of people make is they don't self-identify what they do and where they work. So they'll join these social networks and then they'll become frustrated because they feel like they're never getting any traction or any leads whatsoever. So um, take a moment to go onto your Instagram and your Twitter account and on your Facebook 
and just put very simple realtor, real estate, you know, or the city that you live in. So it would be like realtor selling real estate in Atlanta or Atlanta realtor selling real estate and then put the broker that you work for. So do this across the board on all your social accounts. The other thing that I wanted to call out as well is your username. I made this critical mistake years ago where my username is carloskill83 virtually everywhere. And then when Snapchat came around, I wanted to be different. And my Snapchat username became the Carlos Skill. And what I discovered was over time, people became confused because they were looking for my username that's the same virtually everywhere else on Snapchat and it didn't exist. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to create a username for yourself that's going to be synonymous everywhere. And my recommendation is that your username should be your name and realtor or your name and real estate and do this everywhere. So my username on Instagram or Twitter would be Carlos Gill Realtor or Carlos Gill Real Estate. You do this consistently over time, and as you start creating content and gaining traction, then all of a sudden you become known as Carlos Skill Real Estate, or in this case, your name, Real Estate, or your name, Realtor. The next bullet point that I have there is having a polished LinkedIn profile with a clean headshot and summary. So this is going to be key as well, not just having the headshot like I mentioned before, but having a summary which fully describes who you are and what you do. Once again, think of the keywords that go into the summary of your LinkedIn profile, helping out with the SEO and the discoverability. So if you want to be found on LinkedIn, just like any other social network, you must have keywords in your summary. You must also have keywords in your short form uh, description. So if you were to run a Google search right now for your name, I guarantee you that your LinkedIn profile is probably going to be the first one of the first three search results that comes up. In fact, what you should probably do is hit the pause button right now in this presentation, go over to Google really fast, Google your name, and I once again assure you that your LinkedIn profile will come up in the first three search results. Now, when your LinkedIn profile comes up in the search results, pay very close attention to how your profile reads. You're gonna see your name, you're gonna see your location, where you live, and then you're gonna see another short line of text. That line is critical because that is what Google is picking up. So you absolutely need to have the keywords in your short form summary of realtor, real estate, and even once again, the city where you do business. Now, the last bullet point there is post at least one to two times per day per channel in order to stay relevant and top of mind. In the content marketing module, we go a lot deeper into this. Even one to two times is very light, but at a very minimum, you should be posting at least a couple of times per day per channel, and that is so once again, you can stay relevant and top of mind. Now, Keys to building a personal brand continue. The question that I get asked almost every single day by agents is what can I do to stand out? And I often say to them, you have to give value to your intended audience. Posting listings all day is not gonna cut it. However, if you're injecting personality into how you post listings, if you are um, giving information and access, and what I mean by information and access is you're giving people um, thought leadership on how they can uh, how they can obtain a home, how they can obtain home financing. You're giving them access uh, to mortgage home lenders. You're giving them access to information. This is what I refer to as giving value. Now, how do you go about finding potential clients online? First of all, if you want your content to be seen on any of these social networks, you have to be persistently annoying and in people's faces. That's not on the screen, but that is my, what I like to refer to as real talk. And how do you ensure that you get your content seen by the masses on a platform like say Instagram? You can use hashtags. Instagram allows you to use up to 30 hashtags. Think of hashtags as categories. So anytime that you post a photo on Instagram, if you don't have 30 hashtags, you are missing out on amplifying your content into 30 different categories. So I have some examples there on the screen in front of you, hashtag new home, hashtag just listed. Let's say you're a real estate agent in Atlanta, Georgia, you would wanna put hashtag Atlanta homes, 
hashtag Atlanta real estate, go really, really local. You don't have to just do these generic hashtag just listed or hashtag new home, but go super local. Again, incorporate the name of the city where you do business uh, because the more that you do this, the more that you get your content in front of local consumers, local Instagram users, then you're then the word's going to start getting out that John Smith in Atlanta, Georgia is the real estate to go to because John is always posting content. And it's not just photos of listings. I often will recommend to agents for every sixth photo that you put on Instagram, talk about what you do. The other five photos in between, and what, and what I mean is what you do for a living. The other five photos in between should be content about your family, content about your hobbies. What do you do for fun? Get involved in your community. Go out. Promote other businesses. If your username is John Smith Realtor or John Smith Real Estate or the Atlanta Realtor, um, just throwing some examples out there, then people will know that you're in real estate. If you have real estate and realtor in your profile, people will know that you're in real estate. So you don't always have to be posting about listings and about the real estate industry. You can just post organic content about the community that you serve. Also, if you want to find potential clients online right now, I would advise you to do the following. And and you can hit pause and go ahead and do this. Go over to Twitter.com. You only have to be a member of Twitter in order to try this out. And go into the search bar of Twitter and type in moving to and the city that you do business in. So, for example, if I'm a real estate agent in Los Angeles, which is where I live and where I do business, I would type in moving to Los Angeles. When you type in that search result, go ahead and go through and see. And you might have to scroll through pages in order to find someone. And that's fine. Or you might be in a highly populated city where people are constantly moving in and out of it. So type in moving to your city and then see what comes up. I guarantee you that you're going to find at least one person over the, over the last week that says that they're moving to the city that you do business in. This right here is a prime opportunity to reach out to that potential client and engage them. Offer to buy them coffee when they're in town. Offer to find them listings. Offer to be the resource that they are looking for but haven't found yet. And then engage in local community groups both on Facebook and on LinkedIn. Look, it goes without saying, Facebook is an amazing resource, but a lot of people get caught up in thinking that Facebook is just a place to post their business content on their page. Facebook has local community groups. Once again, if you go to facebook.com and you just click, you just in the search bar, type in the city that you're in, you're going to find groups for your city. Actually go into those groups and start networking. You don't have to do anything other than just announce yourself in the group and say, you know, hey, I'm so glad to be a part of this group and be a part of this community. If I am a real estate agent, if there's anything I can do to help you or someone that you know, whether now or in the future, please let me know. And then and then really the secret sauce is engage in these groups often, um, at least check in maybe once or twice throughout the week. So that way you can stay relevant and top of mind in conversations. And then the last bullet point that you see there is ask your social network for referrals of who they know that's looking to buy or sell a home. If you put on your calendar that at least once a week you are going to ask your community for a referral, you are going to have people, provided you're building true relationships, you will have people that will give you referral business simply because you asked for it. Now, an example of Instagram and hashtags, you see on the left-hand side a picture here of an agent that posted a photo of a recent closing. She says, you're perfect into a wonderful week, seeing this wonderful couple close on their new gorgeous home. It's been a pleasure working with such wonderful people. Can't wait for the housewarming party. So you see hashtag sold, hashtag Milwaukee, hashtag Keller Williams Realty, hashtag welcome home. Um... I would actually recommend that this agent put at least 15 to 20 more hashtags and really focus on the local aspect. If you notice at the very top underneath her username, it says Bayview, Milwaukee. Uh, So she was really smart here. She tagged the city where she does business. So anytime someone clicks on Bayview, Milwaukee, they will now see uh, a listing of photos and provided that she has a high enough engagement, um, her photo will stay in that feed for a while or it'll at least go in the recently posted photos. And then you see on the right-hand side, 
If you type in hashtag Keller Williams Realty, which is her broker, you see over 100,000 posts uh, to date on Instagram. So uh, you might want to go through, look up hashtag your broker that you work for, and just take a peek to see what other agents for your company are posting as well. Now, the difference between a Facebook page and a profile, there are some key differences. First of all, your page is followed by clients, both past and present, as well as colleagues and prospects. You should really leverage your page as well as Instagram to engage in community-specific hashtags. Um, your pages where all things business go. So think of your page as it's strictly business. It's not so much personal. Now, with your business page, you can run ads. You can also receive reviews. You can post business contact information, such as your website, your address, phone number, et cetera. Your profile, the key for a profile is think of it as this is your personal space. It's going to be where you post a mix of family content if you have a family hobbies and things that you're into outside of work. And then maybe occasionally you sprinkle one or two work or business related posts that you share from your page over your profile. Maybe you do this once or twice a week. Uh, and the reason why is because the audience of your profile mainly is made up of close friends, family, and neighbors. So once again, it's where you share content from your page in addition to life outside of your work. Now, the best content to share on social media, I've broken down here in front of you. And like I said before, throughout the Social Media for Real Estate Agents course, we have a module that goes deep into content. There's about um, close to 20 different forms of content for real estate specifically, and I kind of break down how you can leverage each one of those mediums. Um, right there in front of you, you see the four best content um, on social media mediums. It is photos, video, audio, as well as ads. Um, something to keep in mind is the ROI of each one of these mediums, however, is measured separately. Now, what do clients want to see uh, when you start thinking about content? First, clients do want to see new home listings. So let's face it, you're an agent. If you have a listing, post it. But don't just post a photo of your listing. Give us more. Give us a video. Give us a live video tour. Give us 360 photo. Give us a drone. Um, better yet, do a podcast interview with the owner of the home and ask them what they like so much about that home. I think that's something that will be disruptive that we really don't see agents doing at all. Clients also want to see industry insights. So what are the best cities to live? You know, Forbes, Inc., Entrepreneur, et cetera. Always put out these best cities to live lists, best, best cities for singles, best cities for working professionals, best cities for parents, etc. cetera. Um, if your city falls on any of these best cities to live lists, that's industry insights right there. And that's something that you should loudly be screaming to get people to now be interested in real estate in your city. Next is thought leadership. So an example of thought leadership is why now is the best time to buy or sell or invest in real estate. Um, local happenings in your community. So if there's a new business grand opening, if there's a sporting event, a civic event, local school happenings, these are all current events that are centric to your community that you can create content around that isn't necessarily a, a listing, but it's content that can position you as being locally relevant in your community. And then last is DIYs. So home improvements, money saving tips. I think you get the gist of the DIYs. If you're, if you're at a listing, if you're at a house um, that they're doing some home improvements, or let's say it's a, it's a little bit more, you know, dated of a home, you know, maybe you do like a before and after, or maybe, you know, you take a photo of a dated bathroom and then you put that on Facebook and you ask your community, what would you do to change the aesthetics of this bathroom? You know, so just throwing some different ideas out there to help you out when it comes to content. Now, some tips for driving leads. Think about offering a lead magnet on your website to gain emails and contacts. A lead magnet is anything from a home buyer seller's guide, it's listings, it's neighborhood and city reports. Um, set up an auto reply bot. So I want to say it is in the third module um, of the program. I actually share um, with students how to set up a messenger bot. Um, it's actually a lot easier than what you think, but it does take some work from a programming standpoint. 
the biggest advantage for you to set up a bot is so you can collect data. Um, and you can also link up your, your calendar or your website. I personally use Calendly.com for all my meeting scheduling. So you can set that up directly through your bot. So anytime someone messages you, you can collect, again, valuable data, which is the name, email, and phone number. Um, the next bullet there that you see to help you drive leads is keep traffic and lead conversions contained to Facebook in order to not be penalized. So Facebook has... Um, lead forms that you can create within your Facebook page. I am a proponent of using that simply because Facebook is in the business of selling ads. So if, if uh, Facebook sees that you're driving people away from their site, then they are going to ensure that they make you either pay for it or they just don't serve that content up organically to a large audience. Now, the last bullet that you see there is use call to action buttons such as learn more and call us. That's more for when you're doing Facebook ads, anytime you have a Facebook ad, that call to action is extremely important. Now, some different tips for writing text posts. First of all, ask questions of your audience in order to drive engagement. It goes without saying that the name of the game on Facebook is you have to have engagement on your posts. Posts with questions typically tend to drive the highest form of engagement on social media. So an example of that would be, do you know someone that's in the market for, the, for a home? Um, this is honestly perfect for driving referrals for those in your network. The next is what features would you like to see in your dream home? That's a question that's going to incite conversation. And then every day, make it a priority to go on Twitter and once again, run a search for your city plus real estate or moving to and your city and see how you can be of service and of help. Now, before we go ahead and wrap up this lesson, Facebook ads. Facebook ads are extremely important, and I typically advise agents to set a minimum budget of at least $10 a day. So assuming that you are posting um, at least once a day every week, um, throughout the week, you're going to post 30 times in a month. You're going to put $10 out there. That's a $300 ad budget. Most agents can afford at least $300 of ad spend. Um, once again, Facebook does penalize you if you have non-sponsored uh, posts which link out to a website or YouTube um, or posts that have a call to action. That's a big no-no. Um, next bullet point there is keep promoted content on Facebook, but set up lead generation forms within your page and then create interest-based custom audience segments. So a custom audience is when you go through and you indicate who you want to see your ad. Your custom audience can uh, be everything from male, female, age range, interest. You can target first-time home buyers. You can target uh, people that have just been married and might be looking for a home. Um, and then the last bullet point there is use Canva to create ad graphics with free templates. You can take customer testimonials. You can take just listed images, congratulations cards. There's a lot of different examples um, that I share in the course. Um, but make sure that you are at a very minimum leveraging Facebook ads to amplify your content. Now, next steps before we wrap up. Join the Social Media for Real Estate Agents private Facebook group. You can go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash social media Realtors, it is a mastermind group that I started about a year ago. Uh, we have hundreds of agents in the group from throughout the United States. It's a heavily vetted and curated group. So when you do go to join, make sure you answer the questions. Um, it's three very simple, easy questions, but make sure you answer those um, in order to be admitted into the group. Um, with that being said, make sure you also go to your LinkedIn profile and update the basics, being your profile photo, your cover photo, update your summary, your headline, and also find me on there. My name is Carlos Skill once again, and let's make sure we connect um, within the Facebook ads tool, create a custom audience. And if you have any questions whatsoever about any of the material that I've covered here, please do not hesitate to email me. My email address is carlos at gillmedia.co. That's .co, not .com. And then last, but definitely not least, if you've gotten any value whatsoever over the last half hour, definitely consider signing up for the 30-day course. I want to put that information in front of you just one more time. 
The purpose of the course is to help you sell more homes in 30 days with social media marketing. The next course launches on Wednesday, August 15th, 2018. It is an online-based course. However, you will receive four workbooks for each one of the lessons in the course with four weekly group calls for Q&A. So if you sign up uh, before August 15th, you will be in that next group um, in which we will have four weekly calls to check in, touch base, answer any questions that you might have. Um, once again, the investment to um, sign up for the course is a one-time fee of $9.95, which is good for the entire year. You will get access to all the calls. You will get access to the Facebook group. You will get access to myself and any updates. Now, however, if you sign up before August 15th, you will go ahead and get the course entirely for $4.95. So it is a $500 discount. Make sure you go to socialmediacareeracademy.com, click on the products link, and then enter VIP50 as the coupon code in order to save that $500 and get the course at the $4.95 price point. So with that being said, I want to thank you for your time. Once again, if I could be of any help to you, whether now or in the future, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. My email is carlos at, car at gillmedia.co. Um, you can also hit me up on social media, carlosgill83, virtually everywhere. And with that, I thank you for your time and wish you the most success.